Well, welcome, sir, to the Reeducation Experience podcast. And for those just tuning in, this is Brooks Landry on the other end. Uh, he is a he's a Bay Area agent. So when you say Bay Area, like t- tell me that I mean that's a big area. So I mean, where do you specifically work most of your your real estate world? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's it's funny when I first came into the industry, I was like, I'll I'll drive to San Jose, I'll drive to San Francisco, I'll drive all the way. And it's like, you know, it, it can especially with Bay Area traffic, it gets a little crazy. But I, I specialize in the East Bay. Um, specifically, if you're familiar with it, kind of Walnut Creek, Danville, San Ramon, Alamo area, they call it it's about 20 minutes east of uh, of Oakland. So cool. Yeah. And that's um, you're 11 years now in the business. Yeah, so coming up on 12 years in uh, residential, and um, uh, I was about seven years prior in the mortgage industry for almost almost, almost 18, 18 okay. 19 years total between, I don't know what, that's where all these grades come from, I think, and my kids, so. <laughs> you So you started in the mortgage industry? I did, I did, yep. I did too, so my did business you? partner and I flipped a coin, and we said, who's going to do it, because we didn't trust realtors or brokers, because we were ex-engineers. <laughs> And um, yeah, I landed on the mortgage side. He landed on the sales side. Um, and then I ended up, we sold that business and I flipped into sales. So. How was the, so when, when did you get into it? That was 05. Yeah. 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 It's right around the same time. I, I moved from, I'm from Maine originally. So I moved to, to California in 2002, three, 2003 and immediately got in the mortgage industry, cold calling, just originating mortgage applications and then graduated, moved up, moved up. And then the market hit in 08, 09 and went straight into a, res- I thought this is a hell of a time to get into real estate. Let's, let's get into real estate in the biggest financial, you know, disaster ever. Um, but, but no, it was um interesting time. Learned a lot though. You know, wait is when I got my sales thing because my life was going through the disaster. I was going through divorce and I had a kid to take with me and I ended up taking full custody. And I was like, that was my craziness on top of like the world changing. Right. So, yeah. and, and I feel like it's just, you know, it's like salt in the wound, right? Like we, we were in the same type of situation where we, my wife and I, she was in the mortgage space and got into real estate. I did the loans for the most part. And then, and then the market um, market turned and, you know, we had a handful of investment properties all over the country and those were going, property values are going down. I wasn't able to refi. We're losing this. We're losing, we lost literally everything. Mm-hmm. And then the cherry on top was, uh, She's like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, oh, nice. Cool. <laughs> like, I'm excited about it. But, you know, yeah. what, a, what a time to bring my little guy into uh, into the world. So life is funny like that. So more importantly, like, when did the beard start? Like, how long has that been? <laughs> the beard started when I realized I looked like I was 12 years old trying to get business representing uh, some, some sellers out here. So uh, if this thing shaves, I, I shave at least 10 years, 15 years off. Um, but yeah, no, I had to do some. So that might work better for the TikTok crowd then. Hey, so right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure we could talk about that for a while. So when did, so obviously real estate mortgage started before the media company. Yeah. yeah. And, and how, how do you say it? I mean, tell me. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in vision. I am okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very smart way to do it. So you're, you do it, you started it kind of to support the real estate business. And then it looks like you also do lifestyle and some business uh, stuff outside of the real estate industry. We do. It was, we started Envision. So I've always done video to kind of grow, stay top of mind. I I started doing video when I got into real estate. And essentially what I would do is um, during that time, I would, you know, I'd I'd get a list of foreclosures and pre-foreclosures and I'd go, I'd record a video and I'd go on Craigslist and I'd just kind of like constantly post to get leads in. Um, Then it started to kind of, you know, move and morph into any new leads, anybody that I was connecting with, I would just hit them with a quick video. Hey, Darren, it was awesome meeting you. Great talking to you today. And I door knocked and I'd grab information. And then it kind of morphed into um, out of necessity really is what it was. So out here in the Bay, you would think we'd have a lot of options when it comes to video production companies and whatnot to just leverage our listings. And um, my business partner and I were like, you know, everybody had the same kind of three minute video. Everybody had like the same drone. It was like the same piano in the background. And it was just like, we're like, that's not us. We needed to switch this up a little bit. So um we're like, you know, let's let's throw some 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 dance music, some hip hop. Let's put it in the back. Let's keep it under 45 seconds. And that's kind of how we started to kind of bring 
you know, kind of push ourselves a little bit more. And then as everything evolves, we, um, we went from doing listing videos and packages and photos and all the stuff you need to leverage your listing, and kind of expose it to the market. Um, and then we started to uh, work with some big corporations, big companies, Microsoft, we did an Xbox deal, we did a couple other big things with some with some culinary companies out here in the Bay um, to do outside of real estate. But over the past two years, it's really kind of morphed into content creation and really kind of going back to the the root of when I started doing video. And that was, how can I bring value to my clients? How can I stay top of mind, not only in their mailbox, but in their inbox. And then when they see me on social, they're going to see it. That it's just, so um, we started content create and creating some content in short form video. And, and then it just snowballed. And when did you start like that? I mean, when did you say the piano based video was no longer for you? Like when, what, what year was that? Yeah. <laughs> I almost immediately. No, uh, no, that was the piano based video was more. So we started this a little over two years ago, but it was a few years before that where I'm like, you know, I'd hire a video company to come do my videos. And it just maybe just the technology and just just kind of the um, the think outside the box type of type of uh, editing and, and creativeness with the video teams out here. It just wasn't it wasn't for me. And I luckily my business partner, Roland, and I linked up with another one of our business partners, Guillermo, and he's like this. He's just he's like an editing the genius he's oh, good. he's just incredible at what he does and originally it was just let's hire Guillermo just to do all of our stuff and so that we look different than everybody else and then other agents started to kind of hit us up and say what would it be if uh, you did my videos and can we do a walkthrough and can we do a speed ramp and all these other different things so um nice yeah, yeah. so the the um, the idea of getting good on camera I mean, how did that come? Is it, is this natural to you? Did you do theater? Like you're amazing on camera. You're part of the broke agent media crew, I, I think. Is that uh, right? Yeah, well, they, they, you know, I've done some things with them. I'm not exactly part of them, um, but I think we connect well because we've, we've done, we're kind of in that same kind of realm of, um, of just content creation, kind of getting info out there. Um, yeah. Being, being, you know, comfortable on, on video was difficult at first. So it's funny because we're in the process of trying to plan an event for real, real brokerage out here in uh, the Bay. And uh, my business partners were like, you know, you got to get up on stage. I'm like, you're not going to find me on stage, bud. Like, that's just not me. Maybe a QA and a at the most, but I'm not, I'm not going to be a Brad McCollum where he's like owning the entire place. And that's just not me. Um, but everybody says like, why? Cause you, you do so much video. When I first did video, um, I mean, my first video took me like two and a half hours. I was like sweating through my shirt. My face was red. I'm like, oh my God, I, I sound like that. I don't even sound intelligent. What am I doing? So then you start to kind of creep into your own mind and you just self-doubt. But um, it was, it was, I mean, I did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos. So I love how early you, you mean, when you mentioned Craigslist, you don't generally put the idea of video and Craigslist together. Like Craigslist was text-based form and, and that was like the old classified ads for online. Yeah. And I love that you were doing videos that early to promote the value that you were finding. That's, that's cool. I've never heard that yet. Yeah, it was, it was, it, it, it really took off. Um, I actually think, and unfortunately, I mean, maybe not, but I think I had a portion to do with how they shut down being able to put video, at least out here in the Bay, because I mean, it was... I understood that you could, that it was more text-based, but I would just attach a link that would go directly yeah. to my YouTube. And I just repost that literally like every couple hours. So it would just flood whatever city I posted it under, but we got an insane amount of leads, um, an overwhelming amount of leads. Um, and, okay. uh, and then they, they stopped that. So. So you've been, now you said you've been playing into the content day and yeah. like, just like teaching others how to come up with contents. Tell me a little bit about that journey. Yeah. Yeah. So we right here in the Bay Area, we've, we've got a studio. I mean, I'm in one of our studios. We have a podcast space, a couple editing rooms and a bunch of other spots. And what we started to do was um, we wanted to break down the just in short form video batch content for our clients, other agents, other lenders um, on. We try to get away from the dictionary style of content creation in the sense of, you know, a lot of people will go on and say, you know, what is an FHA? FHA stands for federal housing. We wanted to kind of get rid of that because for the most part, my clients I knew didn't care about that. What they cared about was the pros and the cons of an FHA loan of, you know, the issues an appraiser could call if you had an FHA, 1031 exchange benefits and features and stuff like that. So we really started to take topics that we learned over the past 12 years in real estate and the other seven in mortgage and break those down into um, 
kind of layman's terms a little bit, just, you know, things that ways that our clients would understand it. So essentially we would have uh, agents come in and, and we'd batch their content for about three to four hours. Um, after we were done editing everything, they'd walk away with about 30, 35 different pieces of short form video to post on social media. Most importantly, stay top of mind to their database. We had a lot of success with that. Our clients saw great results with that. Um, and then recently about a month, month and a half ago, we just launched our, what we call our virtual service. So we're actually working with agents and lenders all over the country. And eventually we'll move into Canada with a couple of agents that we're working with uh, in the Can Canadian space. Um, and, uh, and really what it is, is we do a virtual content day and we essentially sit with our clients. In fact, we have a couple coaching classes going on right now. We sit with you bi-weekly on an hour each. During each call, we go over six scripts. We walk you through each line by line via Zoom. You're all set up on your camera or your phone. And then once you're finished, you upload all six of those videos. So 12 of them per month, upload them through our app. Our guys over here edit it for you, customize it to your brand, the whole nine yards, and then send it back to the app. And then you can post it or schedule the posting on social media. So it's kind of a, it's a set it and forget it deal. And what it does is it gives the clients 12 videos every month. They stay top of mind to their social, they connect it to their CRM. So their database sees it and they're just, it's relevant info mixed with some evergreen stuff, but it's, it's, it's really dialed in. It's exactly how I've grown my business. Yeah, that's awesome. And then do you go as far as creating like the graphical cover photos and stuff for them? So you guys have learned a lot of that, I'm sure over the journey. Yeah. Yeah, we've learned a lot of that. It's some. It's funny you bring that up because it's something that we are rolling out now. We have a couple other steps that we're rolling out. We're going to start getting into long form as well so that we can kind of help build out the YouTube channel. Um, but I was talking with my business partner at one of our meetings a couple of days ago of this exact thing. So as 2023 rolls around, we want to start having or we're going to have different cover looks so that, you know, you, you'll be able to post and make it, you know, attractive on social platforms. Yeah, keep it curated yeah. as yeah. people... Some people get hung up on that too much, but I mean, yeah. of course. So, I mean, you, so you have been in a position where people are asking you a lot of questions. A lot of agents would be like, dude, I need your help. <laughs> and uh, what, what do you find is like one of the most, most common questions that you're getting a lot about people trying to like struggling to get going on this? Um, the big thing is everybody knows they need to do it. They understand that this is evolving so quickly. And I think uh, COVID and the pandemic kind of turned up the heat a little bit with everybody. Um, the biggest thing really is I know I need to do video. I, I, I just don't know what to say. I If I do know what to say, I don't know how to structure the script in a way where it's got hooks and interest piece and call to actions and kind of bring it all together. So it is, it is engaging. Um, and then who the hell edits it? And how much does that cost? So those are kind of like the big things. And we wanted to kind of handle every one of those objections with uh with the service um but it's the, the big thing is just kind of getting over getting over the hump a lot of older agents um agents that have been in the industry for a while um are kind of at that point and i talk to them daily uh where it's like you know do we I know I need to do this, but like, how necessary is this? And how consistent do I need to do this? Um, so kind of breaking down the, all of those steps. Um, yeah. But yeah. I find we're in this like influx where there's still, and I made a video about this the other day, there's still kind of those agents that have never touched any of this mm -hmm. and they continue to just dominate. They, they, they can stay. And then there's the other flip side that have like only ever done this and they're dominating. Yeah. But there's this, there's this client expectation that's changing where they're, I, I think more and more you're going to see that it's almost most necessary to be there is that what you're kind of feeling too so there's like a lag there's a lag to the maybe the the fading winner is that <laughs> yes that's a great yeah it's a great way to put it yeah absolutely there is you know i i say this a lot and i've and i've, and I've spoken with a lot of people about this where Sometimes it's like the newer agents that are really consistent with their content and the content brings value and it breaks down the questions and concerns and the fears that our consumers are looking for. They may not have the years of production underneath their belt, but they're consistent as hell and they sound like they do. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like a big deal where at the very least it may get them in the in the door um, for an appointment. Um, I am I am starting to see a lot of kind of like the um, it, it, there is there is a group of 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 agents that they do so much business video doesn't really matter you know they know they wake up january 1st and they're going to get x amount in referrals per year so putting yourself in that uncomfortable but that's a you know that's a that's a very small percent of the group yeah, the ones that are that dialed in the ones that have a great maintenance plan that they they, they they top of mind in all the other ways it's it's rare you're right exactly yeah yeah <laughs> so i mean if you were to give somebody like the three basics to be like all right I, I need you to 
kind of like develop these three skills so that this becomes part of it. Anything that like, what are those first three things that you kind of coach people on that you think about? Yeah. So, so the first three, it, I would say it may not even be really, it, the big thing is you got to get out and start doing it. And so the next question always turns into, okay, well, what do I say? And how do I do this? So when I first started really kind of touching my database and being as consistent as possible, I used bomb bomb. Are, are you familiar with bomb bomb? So bomb bomb's got kind of this, this Academy. It's like the, you know, the male chimp um, constant contact with video uh, for those who don't, who don't know, but the, I, I would, I would just, I always recommend kind of do that and just send out, just have mm -hmm. questions and, you know, just hit your girlfriend, hit your boyfriend, hit your friends, hit your family members and have them come back to you and reply to you through video and kind of go back and forth with that. Um, I think that's first and foremost, you need to get out there and at least start the process of getting it done. Um, secondly, what I always tell people to do is why not just go get some, go grab the phone and just kind of walk it around uh, a, a listing in the area, go to your broker's tour and put it, put together a schedule and really kind of break Break out, you know, maybe week one is you want to show the, you know, the top, the top three best kitchens that are for sale in the market. And you're just doing that, but you're explaining the benefits and features and you're kind of showing your, your emotion and showing your mannerisms and showing that you're a little human explaining it. Um, hit that to your database hit that to your social. Um, I'd say really kind of those two, you got to get out and try. And then examples to try is just take advantage of what you have available. And that's these open houses or that's these vacant properties yeah. or schedule the time to see it and, and get some benefit out of it. Right. And it'll never feel authentic until you try this enough because you turn into like reporter voice. Right. And I even find myself catching into that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. No, that, that it is what it is. Because when you get, <laughs> when you, um, when you first start, you have those emotions and those thoughts through your head, just like I was, it was, do I really sound like that? What's wrong with my eye? Um, why is my voice like that? And <laughs> I'm from New England. So I've actually found myself masking my New England accent a lot. Like I'll come home, my wife's like, your, your video doesn't even sound like you. I'm like, I know, I know, I gotta, you know, somehow bring that back in. But so, yeah. So I mean, the so like we know that like 95% of the people that are following us, they're not in consideration. Like they're just people, they're not looking to buy or sell and you're trying to stay top of mind to them. Do you find with this video journey, because we just default to these, like, like you said, like, what is a loan? What is this? What is that? Like it's relevant to most of these people, but, but those people not in consideration, what do they care to see from us? Right. Like what, what doesn't, what, what do we not tune them out front with? You know what I mean? I know it, it, it does make it difficult because you do. And it's funny, again, I was talking with Roland, my business partner about this earlier today. I had this random thought. I'm like, Hey, ask me about my thought that I'm texting you right now later, because I think there's a psychology that we can kind of tweak with this. Um, he's like, all right, you're nuts, but okay. Um, so, but yeah, it, it, it's one of those things where, um, the ones who aren't going to use us at the very least, it's just more repetition for you. I mean, you know, just continue to kind of post uh, post and kind of push yourself out there with, with video or some sort of content, maybe eventually one, maybe they may not use you, but their sister may, their brother may, their aunt may, and they're like, Hey, Darren's everywhere. This guy's talking about, you know, benefits of, you know, investment properties and sales and whatnot. And, and, and uh, you know, what, whatever product or new loan term that's out there is like, you're, you're, you're the authority figure of it. And I think the more you show it, the more you're out there, regardless if they use you or not, you get referrals from it for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, where, did, where did the be a realtor thing come, come I, out I, of? I, I stole that from be a man 100%. So I'm not going to take much credit for that. They, these guys, the be a man, um, uh, comedians out of Boston, I've, I've watched them forever or uh, for, I mean, a couple of years now. And I just, one night I'm just constantly going through these. I'm like, God, that's hilarious. That reminds me of uh, that realtor. Oh, sh that reminds me of that. I'm like, I wonder if we can kind of tweak this and, and, and really what a lot of it is, is just kind of making fun of myself and stuff that I've done. And then it kind of snowballed a little bit. And um, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of be a, be a man uh, fans that are in my messages. Like you're such a rip off. You, you, you are not creative whatsoever. Be creative once you're I'm like, okay, guys, calm down. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, are you funny by nature? Is this like, you've always just been funny dude or what? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. If, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. My wife, my wife would be like, no, you're not funny. She always hits me with these. Oh, that was your joke for June. Okay. <laughs> but no, I just try to have fun with it. Um, I think, um, I think this industry is, 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 
there's a lighter side to this industry that people need to, you know, you can make fun of yourself a little bit. And, and I think too many people take it way too seriously, though it's a very serious business. You're working with somebody's most important investment. You're dealing with friends and family and you're getting them from point A to point B and helping grow their wealth. Um, but the, um, I, I, you know, I just I've, I think my first few years in real estate, um, I work in an area where I was, sign, uh, you know, the easily the 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 youngest within my within my brokerages. So when they saw me walking around with a selfie stick and doing a quick video in the office, I would just you know I would I'd get you know the look down on what is this kid doing? What is he trying to be famous? It's like you know, but I don't know. I, people make fun of them. Need to make fun of themselves more. I think is what it is. I mean, and, and that's the thing, like a lot of people are, wouldn't say themselves as naturally funny or could come up with the stuff like this. So like, have you been able to help agents pull a little humor, a little lightness into their journey? Like, how does somebody do that when they're like, I was an engineer, like getting into sales and trying to turn into whatever the hell I am today has not been the easy journey. Um, how do people do that? Like, is there any tips that you give them? No, I think it's more, um, it's more of a, you know, be yourself. I think, you know, as you've grown in your business from your previous profession in, in, into now, it's, um, it's always in you. I mean, it's in you. I think everybody's got a silly side to them, right? You know, somebody's, everybody was joking as again, nobody was, you know, you know, for the most part, you know, super straight edge with it. But um, I just, you know, I always advise everybody, let's just be yourself. Just talk to the camera, talk to the, to the camera as if you're talking to your significant other, and how would you act? And that's the most important thing and i think what's really um obvious when people are watching video is if you are um if you're real or not and if you are who you say you are there's a lot of people out there that do a lot of you know they do sound like used car salesmen sometimes you know they sound like you're trying to sell you um even if i'm listing your property darren and we're sitting at the table where you're deciding whether or not i'm a fit for you and the family um on all of them, I'm like, hey, at the end of the day, I'm here to walk you through the process. You know, we may, it, whoever you feel the most comfortable with is who you should, who you should align yourself with. Um, and I, I try to get that across through, um, through video as well. It's like, I may not be for you, but um, that's okay with me. And, um, you know, and, but I'm at least I'm a resource that you can lean on that you can rely on as well. Do you find you get good reactions from the client world? I know you have a great agent following, right? As like we find like the stronger social creators are getting agent to agent following, which is a other a different avenue, which is great. Yeah. But you find that the clients are like leaning into some of that stuff too, and they're like, I, I love seeing that personality. Yeah, I, I think that um, I, I think it resonates a little. I've had conversations with the clients where they follow me on social and they look at it as a benefit. They look at it as you've got such a good agent following or local agents that are available that when you post something, they clearly see it. So if you post my home, they're clearly going to see it. Um, but I, I, <laughs> I like to um, and it's tough to see because I would like to see how many clients or people in my farm have been like, he's not for me like that's right. like, yeah you know what I mean because I guarantee yeah. that's happened uh but it's fine again um but maybe it's just saved time and that you know in 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 for future transactions again it's you're not you know we're not going to always connect with everybody and um you got to find your people you know what's kind of crazy is like we know how lazy the average agent is right uh so if the lazy average agent is not scouring MLS looking for property for their clients they will likely see your listing on your feed versus the MLS and that's right. a bit sad but it's reality right it's true yeah no it's true and it's and we're at a market now where that lazy agent needs to uh needs to adjust you know they need to get into it they they yeah. need to start being a, the the early bird gets the worm the kind of squeaky wheel gets the grease type of thing and yeah. um you can't just be waiting you need to go out and get that and um and I think I show that um, my clients, you know, a lot of the stuff that I put on social, I won't hit my database with. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll pick and choose different videos that I want my database to see, um, which I'll hit through bomb bomb or chime and kind of just send it out that way. But, um, you know, again, even with our company that we're with, there's, you know, there's, there's benefits to agent follow. Sure. Yeah. I mean, another thing I see that you do incredibly well, and I, I think probably even better and somehow even more timely and fast than anybody is news jacking, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're jumping on the latest news thing and you're boom, you're like in my scroll. And I, I see that as this, and I've been coaching it. This is, it's an endless resource to go to, but so many agents aren't doing it. Tell me about how you feel that news jacking trend and using that as your content kind of I, source. 
Yeah, no, I like it. I just did one today about cannabis dispensaries in San Jose and how they've been trying to kind of push it and get it out more. But it's been a topic in the Bay Area that, um, um, you know, a lot of people have a unique opinion on. Um, I think it's important. I think what's really important is to understand the subject. So, you know, if I, if I find a subject that we were just talking about this on this podcast earlier this morning, if I find a subject that I think brings value or may I have heard, you know, is, is going to bring some sort of value to some clients of mine or whoever, um, I, I tried to go through a couple different articles. You know, I'm, if I, if I find it on CNN, I'm not just taking CNN's name you know, for it. And I think a lot of people over the past, you know, four to six years know that uh, different uh, media publications may say, one thing and it's a completely opposite. So I try to get as educated on it as possible. Um, but then, you know, obviously we don't do it verbatim. I, I, I digest it. I and try to regurgitate it in a way where it's my opinion. And it's got my, my own little spin on it, but you're right. I mean, a lot of people aren't doing it. A lot of people don't take what's directly in front of them and use that to grow their content. Unfortunately, I've seen a lot of people just plagiarize it, you know, and I've actually read, I've heard some videos from like, ah, that was almost exactly the way it was in the article right there. Um, so, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I, I do think that's a great point that that I do think a lot of a lot of people should, uh, you know, take what's in front of them, the low hanging fruit. I mean, you don't have to create it from scratch, right? It's there for you. And it, you just have to have enough like confidence to share your voice. You know, yeah. what I mean, like have an opinion, right? And exactly. And it's not that hard, right? And you generally have one, you're just probably keeping it to yourself, right? Right. Well, and I think that's that's kind of a stigma. It's funny because I'm like kind of going back to the be a realtor thing for a minute. We like a, some of these that had really good, um, really good uh, engagement was like, you know, having tattoos. Like I got my business partners kind of sleeved up with tattoos all over the place. And that's kind of like a misconception. It's like you had asked, what about the beard? It's like I had to grow a beard so I could act, feel like I would be welcome in a property. Um, a lot of people hide their tattoos and, and, and it kind of goes back to this. It's like a lot of people hide their opinions um, and they're trying to they're trying to appease the masses when that's not realistic. It's like, let's find your solid group of people that love you, um, right. that are going to cheer for you and just be you. And it's, you know, I got kids, I have a, I got a I have 13 to 10 and a seven year old and we're at the, you know, the ages where it's like, Hey, being pot, it doesn't have, you don't have to be popular. This isn't like the popular thing. You just got to be you and the people will come to you and it'll be attracted to you. So totally. Do you find, uh, do you have people ask you to do their social media audits? Like, did you like look through their stuff? Is that part of like, have you got into that yet? No, no, I haven't. Um, Cause truthfully, I'm not really good at that. I don't think. Um, and um, I think what we're really good at is just being able to, 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 to sell the story, to kind of paint the picture and, and bring value in, in a way that um, is easy to understand. I do have a lot of friends in the, in the industry that they do do that. Um, that's, that's just, you know, I feel like if they went through mine, they're like, you're, <laughs> you know, your Instagram's awful. You need to like adjust this. You've got your profile pic is like this sometimes. It's, you know, so some of my thumbnails look like a mess, but yeah, I'm not very good at that. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So personally, through all the years, uh, like what would be your largest lead source? Like from your, you know, you've been in video, you've been doing this for a long time, but I mean, does it, are you finding that it's, it's more top of mind awareness or is it actually like lead generation for you? It's really top of mind. And that's one of the first questions we get is, okay, so I sign up for this service. How many leads am I going to get? It's like, you can't, we can't think like that. That's just not, unfortunately, the way it works. Um, I grew my business when I first came in door knocking. I'd set a schedule Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays for almost about two years where I was consistent in this specific farm. Um, and any lead that I generated, I would have, a, a, they'd go into my database where they'd get my monthly market updates, my opinion on this, that, and the other. Um, I'd share some family stuff, a new, you know, whatever, growing up and whatnot with the kiddos. Um, but um, I've really kind of taken that. And I'd say my business is, is truthfully about 70% of my business comes from my farm that I've cultivated over the years and then you've got sphere of influence that kind of goes off that so um lead gen i can't remember the last time i bought leads um it's really all just been from farm and uh and 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 just really staying top of mind with video so totally i mean the power i i, I built a lot of strong rois and a lot of my success during my most of my production was a big chunk of it was from farming too and was it yeah. And it, and it that's was a transition like from engineer to real estate two totally different, you know, did you take a sphere and kind of hammer them and, or how did that work? You know, I was a little, 
naive slash lucky. I mean, it was the early days of Facebook, right? The middle of like the middle of 2000s had your license and I was buying investment properties. So I was showing the journey, but just like, but not knowing what we were doing right on Facebook right. back then. Like you look at your statuses, it was hilarious. <laughs> um, but like it became this thing to say, oh, Darren's not just doing what I thought he did. And he's doing real estate too. And it, it built a social to sphere connection around real estate. And can you help me with that? Yeah. And then eventually it was like, oh, well, I can replace my engineering income. Um, and that's kind of how that happened. But then then you get into some coaching and you get into some other stuff that taught me, you know, what is farming? How do you do it? And then you see, you know, like there's the spray and prayers in the farming world where they just like litter and then they, yeah. they spend enough money, you'll get it. But right. I was like you door knocked, you know, said it. I was mega open housing. I was like in the community and I was relentless on contacts mm -hmm. and, and it turned an in great ROI. I, I love, I love the farming baseline, but most people won't put in the work. Yeah, I, I'm so glad you said that. And I preach that all the time and like agents that have come and kind of joined our network uh, within real, within the Bay. They're like, you know, how do we start? I'm like, Let's start, let's grow your farm. Let me sit with you and kind of go through um, turnover rates and farms in specific areas in the, in, 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 in the East Bay or the Bay Area. Um, I swear by a farm. I think, and it's just the same thing. I mean, it's the whole, you know, you, you feed your farm and you water your farm and it continues to grow the whole little analogy. And it's true. It's like, if I didn't put the work in 10 years ago um, with a farm and I relied on lead generation, I'd just be spending money nonstop, but I know I'm going to get, we get calls all the time. It's like, Hey, I'm thinking of selling the first quarter. What do you think about next quarter? Should we do that? But that's all because of the stuff I did years ago to that area. So um, yeah, a lot of people, and I think it's, and I would like to hear your opinion on this too, but over the past few years in real estate where it, where the market went through the roof and everybody is really put a sign in the ground and the home's going to sell, at least here in the Bay, the home is selling with multiple offers within hours, legit an hour, you know, a day at the most with our average day on the market was two days at one point. Um, and um, so I think a lot of those agents that came into the industry, and especially with you, with your coaching and all the agents that you talk to, um, this is a wake up call. This is like, yeah. oh, shit, it's time to get going. Like, I, you know, like I didn't realize that there's a huge chance I don't have income for the next six to nine months. You know, there's there's all kinds of reports coming out where the market, they believe it, it'll 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 plateau, maybe dip a little bit more. We were just talking about this on the walkthrough with uh, Broke Agent Media earlier today. And they're like, um, the amount of uh, Redfin coming out and saying the amount of people that are now underwater in the US um, that bought in the past 12 months is going to be close to 8%. So, you know, that's if you're not building a brand, building a brand is one thing, but building a farm is completely different. How, what are your thoughts on that? How do you feel the agent who got their license two or three years ago is feeling now? Oh, I mean, I just left the brokerage yesterday coaching them. And, and again, most of them are under the, in the industry the last two years and they were in a market like yours, very frothy. Things were doing great. They have no foundation. They have no idea what it's like to build a business. So, you know, I, uh, they, listing was launched it was sold there was no expireds there was no withdrawals there was no terminated <laughs> like you know your contract to paycheck was a hundred percent ratio right your now your contract to ratio is, is going to be like super low um while the rest of the world was doing well my when redline was growing we were in calgary and the market was a shift we were mm -hmm. the only market in north america that was shifting down really and and so most of my coaching to my agent body was in a, in a market like what we are in now. Mm -hmm. And 40% um, of the listings taken would sell. Mm. So you had to go two and a half times more effort, mm -hmm. meaning 200 times more calls, conversations, appointments, contracts, which is like foreign to most people now. The fact that you take a <laughs> contract and doesn't become a, a, a paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> freak people out right yeah no it, it's i'm with you and it's i've got a there's a team out here that i know very well where i would say probably 95 percent of the team it's a very very large team 95 percent of the team is about 18 to 24 months in the industry and yeah. they're and they're young they're very young so it's like i get nervous for the team lead um just because i know what that's like i've i've had broker i've owned a brokerage in the past where i had a lot of younger agents that kind of the market was moving pretty well and then when it turned they stepped back and then they, they yeah. moved on um yeah i mean i currently i've got six listings on the market right now where i think maybe 50 percent will go in the next, you know, few months, realistically, um, just based off conversations we've had, but they're not always going to go. So like, how do you know to, you know, 
the agents need to know how to hit those expires, how to hop on the phone, how to adjust for the shifting market when it comes to appraisals. I mean, there's so many moving parts that you and I and a lot of people have been at it for a while who went through those really difficult times in 08, 9, 10. Either, whether you were in the industry or not or had investment properties, you understand that these things can kind of turn on a dime like that. And this is this is where we're at. And I think we're st stuck in it for a little bit. You know, I mean, a lot of the coaches talk about a skills-based market, right? Yeah. That's certainly true. You actually have to use skill now, but it's an effort-based market, which didn't, it, it, the real estate was a buzzword. It just fell in your lap. No matter how you did, you could go backwards into a Starbucks and run into a real estate conversation, yeah. right? And uh, now you're going to have to drag them out. You're going to have to be strategic to be in a, to be in the conversation that the clients are having. Well, for one, few of them, fewer of them are having the real estate conversation. They're thinking, let's just pause for a minute, yeah. right? You have to be hyper-segmented. You mean you got to be like, super geographically located, super timely and relevant for a real estate conversation to even be existing, yeah. right? So it, it's, it's going to be interesting if the effort level of like, what was it? John Cheplak said that if you're not like actively recruiting for new agents, because the new, the current agent body doesn't have the skill set or willingness to work hard enough, you're going to turn your entire team over in the next two years because they're not going to step up. 100%. Exactly. Uh, and then as a team manager, team leader, if you're not aware of how to actually run the business and cultivate leads or cultivate a brand, um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really right. difficult. So uh, yeah, I'm interested to kind of see how these next 24, 36 months go. You know what I, I wanted to ask you about this, like, I mean, agent to agent referrals, right? How, how important do you think that is in our world today? You know? um, I think yeah. Uh, so with me here in the Bay, we have a lot of people getting out of here <laughs> in the San Francisco Bay Area. A lot of people, especially when COVID hit, a lot of people went, I think the biggest states were like Texas and Florida and, and Arizona. Um, agent to agent referral is important, which is another reason to stay consistent and to stay top of mind. It's not just staying top of mind to your database, staying top of mind to agents. And I think that's what's so cool about social media is you and I can have a conversation from, you know, Calgary to the Bay Area. I've got clients all over Florida and or Envision has clients all over Florida and Texas. And it's, um, you know, it, it, you're a resource. And, and again, you're still it's a whole nother a whole nother level of staying top of mind in, in generating leads. Well, I mean, if 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 the pie is smaller, less sales, mm -hmm. there's more agents out there trying to figure it out. So again, more competition, right? More failure rate on every contract that happens, right? Th these are like can't burn in the candle at both ends, yeah. right? So why not? have something that could potentially get, uh, have an outside source sending you business like other agents. And if you're strategic about it, find where your market's moving to exactly. or vice, who's moving to your market. Like right now, Calgary is a hotspot. So our, our real broker Toronto-based friends, I'm connecting with them heavily, right? We're, we're BC, same thing, overpriced for my market. So they're flocking here, right? And you wow. have, every market has the same, mm -hmm. some kind of in and out. And you just got to learn it, right? Yeah, yeah. And and it's funny, there is this agent out here that was definitely ahead of the game. Um, I don't know if he planned it or got lucky with it. He's intel very intelligent, incredible work ethic. But he was, um, prior to COVID, I mean, he was heavy on moving out of California. I'm the guy moving out of California, moving out of the Bay. I'm the guy. Um, and out here, in, in the, in, at least in the San Francisco Bay Area, Silicon Valley, you know, is 30 minutes away. Facebook, Google, all these places are, are you know, not not too far. Tesla. I've got, I would say, probably 75% of my clients are engineers. And a lot of them are within the tech space. So we've had so many layoffs um, with a lot of these tech-based companies here in the Bay Area. And the next spot is, you know, where do we go? And we're building relationships with people in Texas. Um, you know, uh, Tim Macy and uh, Trey Serrano and uh, Jeremy Knight and a lot of those guys in those those different cities were able to kind of connect with and say, hey, we have a lead, we have a potential guy that's going to be moving out there. So totally yeah. create content, yeah. joint content. Like, yeah, yeah. amazing. Yep. I got a, I gave, I made Tim, speaking of Tim, I made him run through this thing called What Matters Most okay. and it was the rapid fire. So I'm going to hit you, you. These are one word answers. Okay. Okay. So, and they're random. I, I mean, I actually, I kind of had to laugh when I went back through this and looked at <laughs> <Great>. this. <laughs> so when we also know a guy that has good hair. Um, so <laughs> this one, this one will, uh, the first one is this on video. Mm -hmm. What matters most, good hair or good lighting? Good lighting. <laughs> How about 
funny based content as an agent versus value value i think all right i think so too how about talking head versus vlog style i like talking head i do i do like the talking head how about this one east coast west coast totally different east coast i live in the west coast but i always i'm my i'm from the east coast my entire family's back there so oh, i didn't think you're gonna say that okay yeah. how about this one matt leonetti or uh, eric simon jeez, jeez. <laughs> um <laughs> i'm gonna say eric i'm gonna say eric <laughs> and, uh, too fun. yeah me and matt went back and forth the other day i didn't realize he was a bruins fan i'm a diehard bruins fan so i don't know it's kind of a one one a between those guys <laughs> too good batching content versus creative just on the go and getting content done batching organization is important how about the importance of captions versus adding b-roll captions mm -hmm. how about this time blocking versus just seeing what the day brings you have a time block got a time block <laughs> <laughs> i know you're a busy guy you, yeah. you do that I, I live and dream by it um short form based content instagram based versus tiktok yeah um i know these are one worders but i'm gonna i'm gonna go i'm going instagram over tiktok every time i think Yep. How about somebody that's going to go in the next phase, go to YouTube long form, or do you play and go and crush LinkedIn? Um, LinkedIn is, it's funny because I was talking to buddy Connor Moran. I don't, I don't know if, do you know Connor, Connor Moran? Uh, he's in San Diego. Um, he's, he preaches uh, uh, LinkedIn and um, there's so many few there, there, there's so many, there, there isn't as much video content on LinkedIn and you can touch a lot of people that way. YouTube is, uh, it's, it's where you get your leads for the most part. You know, this is something that I'm really diving into. And one of my 23 goals is to push more long form content, kind of, kind of move a little bit away from short form or kind of do like a 60, 40 deal. Um, but, uh, I mean, I have, I mean, you and I know the guy with the hair who just kills it on, um, on YouTube and Jeremy does too. I'm talking obviously Brad, who's a really good friend of mine. Um, um, yeah. but these guys, they kill it through, through long form and it works, you know, they're feeding the family and they're growing like crazy off that. Totally. Mm -hmm. I think I know the answer database versus paid lead gen database. That's database all day. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you kind of just hinted on this as we wrap this up, what are three things you're putting your focus to, you know, you just mentioned translate into long form. Now, are you doing that off the backs of just a longer form uh, discussion of your short form topics, or are you going a different direction? So I'm going to do longer form off short form topics, um, or bring it from my long form and chop it up into short form topics and be able to kind of batch it that way as well. Um, 2023, I've got a couple different goals as far as lead gen and kind of growing a little bit more. One of them is incorporating my physical farm with my videos, uh, in the sense that, um, We've got, I've got an entire uh, process built out, which will start hitting the second week in January in a new farm that I want to dig into a place that I've never sold real estate, never represented anybody. Nobody knows who I am. And that's a test. I want to see if this is going to work. And I think it will. And essentially uh, it's, it's through direct mail pieces with a thumb mail, essentially, you know, uh, you know, whatever that video topic is that we're going over with a QR code, the QR code is going to grab information, email address, phone number, likely phone number first, and then they're going to have to opt in for email and contact info and i want to see how many different um how many different leads i can generate off that and so that's one way that i'm going to do that the other form is going to just kind of grow my long form um are you going to try to adopt that into your current farm that's working to see if you can get more contact records i am i am so i'm really turning up the the the, the ad or i should say the mail spend um on a farm that i'm not as familiar I'm, I'm i don't i know well but nobody knows me and then i'm also going to kind of probably do like a 70 30 split 70 percent of my my direct mail campaign goes to a farm i don't know 30 percent is going to the farm i do know that could be a complete disaster and it could should maybe the other way around um but the I, I think it's a way where I can incorporate video into a door knocking. It's essentially a digital or a, a, a you know, a, a digital door knocking. And I think it's a way that, you know, I was testing this out a, uh, about a year ago where I would do the QR codes around all of my listings and I'd get, you know, 
anywhere from 80 to 90 people that click the code, but it was basically just to watch the video, see who's selling in their neighborhood. So I really want to say if I can break down while I break down, you know, how I helped a client or clients sell during a divorce. Obviously, I'm not giving names. I'm not giving anything like that. But here are some pitfalls that we run into. And here's how we get out of that. I'm curious to see how many people are going to click and get an idea of that. Um, you know, how I've helped educate my clients on, you know, upgrading their home to bring more value in. So it's just, I'm basically breaking down stories of the past 12 years of real estate um, and uh, just incorporate it into direct mail. And hopefully this QR code hits, or I may just waste an insane amount of money, but we'll see. That's well, I mean, we if, I think you know, we can be, when QR codes almost died, COVID yeah. comes and saves it. And now right. everyone, like even our 85 year old grandparents and understand what a QR code is and use them. So yeah. it's interesting. I think it was just so early when it first came out that it just felt, even for me, it felt just weird. And now it's just like, of course, right? It yeah, I mean, because you went to every every restaurant and the way you got your menu was the boom, you know, QR code it, and everybody did that. So um, we'll see. I'm, you know, checking with me in nine months. I may <laughs> just have just blown an incredible amount of money, but we'll see. <laughs> how big is this new farm you're going after? Just how's uh, the household count? Yeah, it's about 2,000. So you're um, going all in. Yeah, I'm going 2,000 homes. Um, it's an area that's got a pretty good turnover, but I'm going aggressive. I'm going every 10 days for 38 cards, and I'm going to see how that goes. Um, I may May shoot myself in the foot we're going way too aggressive with cards so so quick i may adjust it as it goes and just goes every two weeks but um it's going to have a direct you know kind of pushback i have a funnel that's being built that essentially will be able to it's basically a, a netflix of videos so you can go through and you can go you can click on three questions you should ask the agent you're interviewing before hiring them and they're not your basic questions right like when you and i sit at a listing presentation a lot of the times the sellers don't know what to ask the buyer or the the listing agent um so questions like you know i've you know out here in in, in the states it's you know i've lived in my home for 16 months can i sell it without any tax ramifications or any issues it's like you know a lot of these type of things that it goes past what's your commission how many homes have you sold in my neighborhood and are you available you know yeah, what's it's your marketing plan yeah what's your marketing plan yeah and it's just kind of breaking down the stuff because i've left listing appointments or i found myself a listing appointments being like what you should be asking you know you know consider this consider that um so we'll see i'm excited i mean you and i were both in the same firm a real broker Mm -hmm. How long have you been there now? February was, it will be my one year. Yep. Okay. So yeah, so I'm just a, a hair older in it than you. Mm -hmm. What is it that you, I mean, that you love about it the most? So it's a great question. And I get the question a lot. Um, and I try not to be salesy with it, but I try not to be cliche and corny with it as well. Um, it really is. It's really, it's, it's a, it's tough to say without actually going to an event and seeing how the leadership, the top agents and the people that have been there for a while actually move and how they mingle. I've been with a handful of brokers. I've owned brokerages. I've never in 12 years of real estate ever been a part of anything that gives me so much support. Um, the, the, the split's cool. The rev share is cool. The stock bonus, all that's the cherry on top. It's the fact that I can reach out to Ken Pozak or Brad or anybody at any time. Like the other day, I hit up um, Burn McGovern in uh, in San Diego, and I'm like, "Hey, I got questions about like video ideas on YouTube." Within hours, I had a hundred video topics sent to me, and I'm not like a part of his network. He's just yes. like, "Hey, do this, do that," and um, it's just it's just such a the culture is so different. There was a real estate brokerage out here in the Bay Area uh, named Climb Real Estate. And the thing about Climb was they had this atmosphere and they had this culture about them that was unlike any other real estate company. And it was to the point where Realogy was going to buy Climb or Corcoran. And they were up in the air. Who do we buy? They ended up buying Corcoran because they couldn't replicate. I think they realized I can't replicate atmosphere in many markets in you know Calgary or Kansas City or what Cal what the bay area has i don't know if i can do that here so they bought they bought the the proven name um real has that climb feel it's just family super helpful um and have a good time is what it is so yeah i agree with you i mean we we built that climb type of vibe in in, in redline and uh when we were considering options that had to be front and center but if you if you've never experienced something like that it's hard for people to put tangibility to it and like truly does that matter but when you're in those walls 
the game changes. Real estate's different. And then when you throw things like, well, the fact that we own this thing together, you and I, mm -hmm. it just adds another layer. It, it, it's so crazy. Like I'm 17 years in and I can get goosebumps just thinking about excitement. And I would never have thought that at 41. So. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's, um, it, it's unique. And it's, and it's funny because when we get that, I, I don't pitch the like you know the the monetary things any mean by any means i just say hey hop on this zoom call and listen to tim and and <laughs> uh and and katie do her thing or listen to bob explain master social media mastermind and it, and that's it and it, it works for you or it doesn't but it's a cool company it's um it's the best real estate business move i've made in real estate in my career hands down Love it. So when when did you say you're bringing your service to Canada? <laughs> right, yeah, right. I know we're we're talking with um talking with a couple people. There's and we have a lot of uh like as you know. And I was talking with um with a buddy of mine that uh, is going to be joining soon up uh, in in Canada, and he's like, well, we can't talk FHA. You know, we can't talk right. to 31 exchangers. And I'm like, that's true. I clearly didn't think that. So getting the lingo down is is important. So shortly, hopefully, second third quarter, we'll definitely be in for sure. Well, buddy, so the best place to find and follow you, it's, it's just at Brooks Landry Group, right? Is that like your main one? Yeah, uh, Instagram, Instagram or Brooks Landry Group um, or uh, on Instagram for Envision, I-N-V-Z-N Media. So, so say that again, I-N-V-Z-N. Yep, I-N-V-Z-N Media, Envision okay. Media. Yep. And I'll tag that in here as well. But buddy, thank you for being you on the, the Education Experience Podcast. Hopefully uh, it was as fun for you as it was for me and uh, yeah. I could talk for hours. So It was awesome, man. I appreciate it. I know we could keep going, but thank you, man. I really appreciate it. All righty. All right, we'll guys. talk to you later, sir. Cool. Have a great See one. Bye-bye.